I'm glad you're all here. It's going to be a wonderful day. We expect God in the house. And demons have to flee today. They don't belong here. Our, our, we, we command our flesh today to walk in the Spirit with the Holy Spirit today. I'm going to read uh, just a short verse from Revelation 1. Chapter 1, verse 5, second part. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Anybody here been freed from some serious sins in your life? God is so good to us.
you, Jesus. Let me welcome you to Christian Assembly. Let me welcome you to our the first of our services for Missions Convention this year. <laughs> you got it, buddy. And, um, you know, that song we were singing, I want to speak the name of Jesus. You know, that's, that's what I want to do this morning. I want to speak the name of Jesus over this convention. I want to dedicate the services, Jeff and Abby, uh, Hunt tonight, and and Shannon with us on Wednesday night, and then and then the, the gardeners next Sunday. But I want to speak the name of Jesus over it all, don't you? I mean, that's that's really what it's about. He's worthy. He's worthy. And so I'm going to ask you to join with me. In just a minute, we're going to pass out these uh, pledge cards, and and when we do, I want to pray before we do. But I, I want you to take these, and I want you to take it home with you, and I want you to. About it. And I want you to ask God what He would have you to do this year. You know, and, and but at the end of the day, you know, we, we look at we look at our lives, you know, like like Don and I, I mean we I don't know about y'all. Yeah, you can grab a seat for a second. We've been spending money, a lot of money. Everything's expensive, everything's crazy right now. And the temptation is this is cutting out. The, the, the temptation is to back off. The temptation is to just play it safe. The temptation is to retreat a little bit and play, you know, be careful. But folks, he's worthy. And I believe that we are like that missions pledge from a couple of years ago. The end is coming. The finish line's in sight. And it's not time to back off. It's time to run. And so, folks, let's just pray together right now. And let's just dedicate this, these, these set of services together. Ask God to speak to our hearts and, and, and just, just work in our lives today. Ready? Father, we come to you this morning. We come to you in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, that matchless name, the only name given to us whereby men must be saved. The name that we have been commissioned to proclaim across this globe the name of Jesus, the name on which we have taken our stand, the name on which we are saved. And Lord, we just give that, we just honor, we give glory to the name of Jesus. God, as we come to you this morning, the first of four services, the first of this week, God, we just speak that name over all these services. We speak your name over all of our speakers. We speak the name of Jesus. And we ask, oh God, that you would have absolute authority and sway and importance in everything. Speak to our hearts. Move in our lives. Strengthen our commitment. Call us, God, to that place in you, that deeper place, God. Jesus, reveal your heart to us more and more. God, as we dedicate these meetings, God, we also ask for your blessing upon every single person, Lord, who is considering and praying about their missions pledge this year. And we speak the name of Jesus over that. Lord, have your way among us. Fully. Completely.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask our ushers to come and help me distribute these. Friends, i got to tell you that just, just as we were praying just a moment ago, I don't know about you, but that, that, that peace that we were singing about, that peace of, of God that Lord, I, I just sense that even as we distribute these, that this really is a, a, a holy moment. And as, as, he, as, as you take one of these, receive it as, as something from God, really. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I'm sorry, folks. I, I just feel like we just need to hold up for a second. We bless you, Jesus. Lord, we're just trying to keep in step with you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, this morning as I was speaking with uh, our missionary, Mark Haney, the phone, the phone rang twice. I didn't go get it the first time because, you know, I just thought that was rude to interrupt a conversation. I figured out we got an answering machine, let it, that's what it's for, right? But then the phone, again, right on, right on the heels. And a lady called the church here to ask prayer for a, for a young girl by the name of Jenny. This, this, this girl, what was that? Wow. This, this young lady, 30 years old, attempted suicide and is, and is asking that the church pray. She said, Pastor, will you pray? And so I prayed with her on the phone and I said that we'd be praying today. And we also want to hold up Jacqueline as she has her surgery this week. And uh, so would you join me? Would you join me in praying for Jenny and for Jacqueline this morning? I think it's, you know, folks, it's such a, it's such a uh, honor that people call us to pray for them. They're reaching out. And so, Father, this morning we come to you and we lift up Jennifer to you. God, I don't know who this girl is, but I do know she's in trouble and I know she needs you. And God, I ask that you would step in in this moment and touch her. God, she needs a miracle. She needs a miracle for her life to be spared that she tried to take. And God, we're asking for a miracle, God, that you would restore and heal her body. But God, even as we were singing this morning, we realize that there's a greater deliverance that's even needed beyond that. God, she needs salvation. She needs hope. She needs deliverance. And we do declare the name of Jesus over her life. God, for the honor of the name of your son. Come on. Come on. 
Touch this girl. Touch her, Jesus. And Lord, we lift up Jacqueline as her surgery date approaches. And Lord, we're, we're asking for your touch there too. God, we've been praying for healing and Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus that healing come. Bless her, God. Guide every single person that's part of this healing process. Doctors, nurses, technicians, everybody. Bless them and, and equip them to facilitate the healing in her body that's needed. Jesus, give her peace. Give Scott peace. Give the girls peace. Watch over them and keep them one and all. And we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You prayed with my mom this morning. Yes. The girl's awake now. Oh, my. She came out of the coma. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's the scripture say? Before you called, I answered. <laughs> Man. Save her, Lord. Now save her. Save her. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I, hang on, I've got to catch my breath already. Man, thank you, Jesus. God is, God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Let me try to gather my thoughts here a little bit this morning. I kind of caught me off guard. But, uh, man, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to welcome our guests uh, for maybe first time, first time in a long time at Christian Assembly. And uh, if you uh, are a guest, there's a, there's a card in the, in the seat in front of you that asks you to fill that out. And there, there's a table out here in the hallway, and, and Miss Linda will be out there after service. Or you can drop it in the offering basket when it goes by. Just want to get to know you, get to know your name a little bit. And, uh, and Lord bless you for being here this morning. You, you, you come on the first day of our missions convention, and we welcome you. Uh, also want to just take a moment and, and recognize the veterans among us. Friday was Veterans Day. And I hope you uh, were able to uh, make it to Texas Roadhouse and get your free meal, right? Did you were you able to, I hope you, no, seriously. Our, 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 the veterans in the room, would you just stand up so we can acknowledge you this morning? The veterans, come on, stand up. I know we got them. Mario, Caleb, hey, let's do it, Thank you, guys. Thank you for serving. Thank you for serving. I mean that. And uh, I'm going to ask our ushers to come again, and uh, we're going to receive the morning tithe and offering. And uh, I'm going to prepare to... Uh, uh, hear from a, a new friend of mine, a guy by the name of Mark Haney here in just a minute. Uh, long story short, uh, you may recall that I that we, we had been preparing to have Corey Bro with us, but uh, through a series of unfortunate circumstances, well, actually a lot of human error, either on his part or my part, I'm not sure which, to be honest with you, uh, I really don't know. We, we, were, we were in a hallway at district council yelling at each other, and I think somehow we got our dates crossed. But anyway, but, but uh, Mark, here's, here's, here's the crazy part of this. Mark was preparing to come to Zion because he's a, associated also with the faith homes. Yeah. And so he was going to be in Zion anyway. And so it was like, you know, it was like God said, you know, here's, here's a little detour, but I've got you. And, uh, and so it, it, it's kind of cool. The first time I met Mark, he was uh, actually, him and I were meeting with Pastor Dave for prayer. And that's the best place to meet somebody is in, is in a prayer meeting, because then you get to kind of see their heart and get to know them a little better. That's how you, if you really want to get to know somebody, invite them to a prayer meeting. I'm, I'm telling you, because that, that's, where, that's where their heart comes out. And so we are going to, I assure you, we are going to have a blessed time together. And so let's, uh, Tim, would you go ahead and bless that offering, please? 
Father, we just come before you today with thankful hearts, Lord. We just rejoice that we can be in the house of the Lord. And Lord, as we give to you today from the fruit of our labor, Father, I ask that your hand would be upon it, that you would bless it, Lord, that you would use it to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I um, want to remind you that this evening, uh, Jeff Nabby Hunt will be with us at 6 o'clock, and, and, and Shannon, I can never say his name right. Baal. Baal, like, like, like the God, God of the Bible, but spelled totally different. <laughs> he will be preaching for us uh, Wednesday night at, at 7 o'clock. And, uh, and then our missions convention will close with uh, uh, Keith and Delcy Garden. And uh, next next Sunday morning, and uh, but part of part of what we do on that closing event is we we convert the sanctuary into a wonderful banquet hall. It will be beautifully decorated as always, and it will be a glorious time. But there's one thing that we really need of you, and that is to make sure that you sign up to bring some food. You can't have a banquet without food, and that's on you. And so. <laughs> And so we're going to challenge you, as always, to maybe venture outside your norm and to create a dish that has an ethnic flavor to it, maybe of your own uh, distinction. That would be cool. And, uh, but, but we also want to ask you to sign up for that out in the hallway and give us a, so we have an idea of what to expect and how much to, uh, to set up for and things like that. But uh, we'd ask you to sign up out in the hallway on the, on the, bolt, on the uh, clipboards out there. Uh, j just so, well, frankly, so Connie and Jacqueline don't go crazy. Uh, they're, they're the ones that always has to worry about that. I just say, take care of this, ladies, and they do. So cut them some slack. Um, we're going to go ahead now and dismiss the children to Children's Church. And, uh, and the nursery is going to get open also. And uh, so across the hallway, Barry and Carmen, there you go. There they go. <laughs> As always, I love the idea of couples serving like that. I'm, we're seeing that more and more in the church, uh, husband and wives just taking on a ministry together. That is just like really cool, I think. And uh, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Also, um, on the 27th of the month, the last Sunday of the month, we're going to be having a water baptism service. I know I have one that wants to be baptized, but I haven't heard from others. But I know that there are. And so we're going to ask that you, uh, that you uh, hit me up this week, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll figure out uh, where we stand on that, and uh, we'll take care of it. Without further ado, I'm going to hand this uh, microphone off to my, my new friend, a guy by the name of Mark Haney. But as he's coming, I understand that we have a video presentation. Actually... Pause. They didn't. They didn't get it up there yet. Wow. Guys, you know you go to a lot of churches, and there are certain churches where you're like, I can go there. There aren't very many of them where you're just like, Oh yeah, I, uh, I can go here. God bless you. Um, it's an honor to be here. It's even more an honor now. <laughs> Just like, oh, this is, this is a church. Um, I, feel, I feel more comfortable after worship and just feeling the presence of the Lord here. I want to tell you two things um, that one Ken didn't tell you, Pastor Ken didn't tell you, and the other one he doesn't know. The first one is, the truth is about us meeting and why he got such warm fuzzies is because I had a beautiful picture of a certain type of animal that he loves. <laughs> and it had been taken from the family property down home. <laughs> but the second thing that he doesn't know is that, wow, God really did put this together because, um, you know that thing where you and Corey were hollering in the hallway and somehow you missed your dates? I had it worse. The other guy and I were standing on the street talking about, but then we never followed up, and so I didn't realize that he had actually presumed that I was coming this Sunday. I got a phone call yesterday and said, now you're coming tomorrow, right? <laughs> G 
Jesus. I was like, no, I'm like way far away. That's not happening. So when you were telling that, I was just like, wow, it was a double time. You guys and us guys for me to have the honor of standing here and bringing you the word this morning. So um, today, if you allow me, I'm going to just take a few moments and tell you the type of the work that I do in Africa. I won't be saying names of places because um, it's a sensitive area. Um, but I'm gonna show, we're going to show a little video, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the work, and then I have a word that I'd like to share with you. So let's go ahead. Welcome to the Forgotten Islands in the Indian Ocean, where our Live Dead team is working to plant the church where it's never been planted before. This is Mark Haney, and I want to share with you about a couple of our core values, discipleship and evangelism. We've seen them come to life here. Let me tell you this story about a guy named Z. Z came to know about Jesus through a local, uh, near culture believer who came to his island, shared with him and gave him a Bible. Z um, was in his teens, he started reading the Bible, he read it so much that his friends teased him about being called a local Christian. Years later now, we are seeing the results of the seeds that he may have planted in Z's life. Because Z and his brother, in this past year, came to a team member of ours and wanted to study the Bible. So they began studying with the team members. And then, one day, Z showed up with tears in his eyes. Jesus had come to him in a dream. Jesus changed this man's heart and mind and life. He is not the man he used to be. And so now, we are working with discipling him. We're discipling him not only to grow him up in the faith, but for him to reach out. Our goal is planting an indigenous church here in the islands. And Z's doing it. He has five guys who aren't even believers that are meeting with him on a weekly basis. Z has shared with him his, their, his testimony, and they are hungry. In fact, a couple weeks ago, when Z and I were talking about moving from the prophet stories to Jesus stories, Z said, they're ready, they're thirsty. We really ask you to pray. Pray for Z and the guys. Pray that they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Pray that all five guys would come to know Jesus. Uh, really, these next few weeks are critical. Z knows persecution will come. Pray that when it does, that, that God will protect him from the evil one. That he won't be given over to some of the things that have happened to believers in the past here on the island. And that this core group of guys will just explode into the church being planted here on the Forgotten Islands. Thank you. We appreciate you listening to us. We appreciate you praying for, for us and for this new church plant here on the islands. God bless you. That's a little update that I did before. You guys control my volume because I will control it like this and I'll get quiet and I'll start whispering. But I got like a lot more volume if you want. So you guys just take care of it. Anyway, I did this update before I left the islands, and um, I've got a little update since. Uh, the update is that now there's another guy that's come to know Jesus among that group, and a lady who is married to that guy has started coming to the group, and it is essential for building the church that we don't just have single guys. How many knows that a church full of singles, guys, just isn't really the church, right? We gotta have families, right? Husbands, wives, children. So the church is being planted where it's never, ever been planted before. Yeah. So when I was 38, Jesus changed my heart, and he reminded me about a month later of a call that he put on my life when I was a little guy. That's why it's so important to have those little guys here in the service, and, and um, you know, back there in kids' church. So, 
I don't, it would take me forever to tell you all the details of how he led me to a place that I didn't even know existed. It's pretty wild. But the bottom line is, is that about eight or nine years later, because I had some growing and just sitting to do, eight or nine years later, he had me halfway around the world, finding out about an island, reaching out to Muslim people I never knew existed, and I'm a certified member of the Slow Learners Club. Anybody know what I mean? It means I just sometimes really need Jesus to show me. The, yeah, is this is this really you? And so I had an invitation to go visit, and I said to him one morning in my quiet time, I said, Jesus, I just want to know it's you. I'll pay to get me to France, because I had to go to France to get there. And it was frequent flyer miles, it was gonna cost me a couple hundred bucks. He knew I wouldn't take any skin off of my teeth. You paid to give me to the island. And he knew that I meant, I'm not asking anybody for money, you just take care of it. That was a Tuesday. And on a Friday, a lady handed me a check for $1,500 and the Holy Spirit whispered, check. So I went to the island, God opened the door, not for that island, because AGWM doesn't have any work on that island. So he opened the door for me to go to join a Live Dead team, and Live Dead is an outreach to completely unreached people groups. To join a Live Dead team on another island, three islands over, and that's where this story comes from. That's where I've been for the most of the past four years. But God doesn't forget where he's called you to. Remember that. And if you just obey him and take the next step, <coughs> five years after he called me, AGWM asked me to join another couple. And we're going to go plant a little dead team on that island that he originally called me. God is good. And he is faithful. But we need your prayer support. Yeah. And here's why. There are ladies that have been on that island for 40, over 40 years. There are Afri South African ladies, white ladies that have come and infiltrated, so to speak, the island. They've learned the language. They've translated the scripture. They've told us among this people, maybe five or six people that we know have come to know Jesus. Wow, in 40 years. It's hard. She said, as soon as they know why you are here, they will put a curse on you. Okay, they're not playing. And then she said something that just made me go, ugh. She said, I want you to understand there are still human sacrifices on this island. She said, you'll be next to a guy in an office on a Monday morning in a shirt and tie, and on the weekend he has been doing some of the most diabolical things you could ever imagine. So we're headed into the spiritual hornet's nest. But God called me. I mean, to this, to this island, to this people, where there is no indigenous church. There is is no group of people following Jesus. So, um, we call it Shipwreck Island for several reasons, but one of the reasons is they are just spiritually shipwrecked. I, um, I want to tell you a story about um, from the island that I was on, you know, the neighboring island. Um, and I want to tell you a story about Mbaye. And that just means grandpa in their language. I don't know what his real name is, we just call him Mbai. And he's the grandfather of a family that I got to know. And that they invited me into their home. And, and, and I had shared the gospel and they had shared their beliefs with me. Mbai, you know, and old guys don't talk a lot. But when they do, you listen. And we just connected. We didn't have any deep conversations or anything, but we just connected. 
He was old. They don't know how old he was. He got sick. And he finally went to his daughter's home. That was the home that I knew, the family I knew. And, and she was taking care of him. He had his own bedroom. And I went by one time and uh, stopped. And he was sick. And they took me in there. We talked a little bit. And the next time I went by. I had the honor of going into his room with him by himself because I knew the family, you understand, a foreigner would never go in a room with an old grandpa by himself because you just don't do anything by yourself and it's an honor to have them there, they're guests, right? But I was no longer a guest in this family. I was no longer a guest. I was family. So I could just walk in the door. So an old man, he didn't even sit up on his bed. One of two things, he was either too weak or he was weak and I was family, so he didn't need to sit up for me. And so I got down and then the best I could in his mother tongue, because you know you're just learning and still learning, was able to share a little bit of the gospel with him and tell him to cry out to Jesus. He was hurting, and he was dying, and he knew it. And I was just real upfront about that. And it is possible that we snatched one from the darkness before he stepped into eternity. That's why we're there. I won't know until eternity. Um, yeah. Now, they're not all that dramatic of a story, but... You know, I told you the story, and folks, it's enough to give me inspiration, yeah, to go share the gospel over the next couple weeks and the next couple months, and then you kind of forget about it, and it might be enough for you to remember why you're writing that check next week and next month, but we're Americans here, and we, uh, we're focused on me and mine. That's just how we are. We're individualists and we're pretty self-focused. I'm talking about me here too. And so I was thinking, what is it? What is it that will give us enough why we should keep praying and going, doing, and giving? What is it? going to give us enough of a reminder that we will do that. And I want to try to answer that a little bit. I want to look at a couple of scriptures. And the first, I have a question first before you open your Bibles or snap open your phones. I don't, you don't snap open our phones anymore. But did, did, wouldn't we agree that Jesus fulfilled every prophecy from the Old Testament you know, if you hear there are however many hundred prophecies Jesus fulfilled. Yeah? yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The Old Testament, right? The scriptures from his day, he fulfilled every prophecy that there was. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 2. And I'll read it out loud. And I didn't give him the verses ahead of time if you're used to seeing them up there ahead of time. Um, Psalm chapter 2, and we're going to jump in the middle into verse 7. And it says, I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, stop. Who is he? It's the decree of the Lord. It's the Almighty. I heard somebody say it. God. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten me. Ask of me and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance. And the very ends of the earth as your possession." Folks, these are instructions to Jesus. And I have every reason to believe that when Jesus was here on earth, he actually prayed to the Father and asked him for the nations. Ask me for the nations, and I'll give them to you as an inheritance. I just believe Jesus didn't miss one. Come on. I'm glad he didn't. I'm glad that the disciples followed the command to go into the, all the world. 
because they did. And then they ended up in Southern Europe and then it kind of spread through Europe and it was spreading other places too. Thomas went to India and things started going to Africa and, and you know what? I call myself an American mutt, but basically I know that all of my ancestors came from Europe somewhere, right? And your ancestors may not have come from Europe somewhere, but they came from some continent somewhere. They went into all the world, so thank you, Jesus, that they did. That's why we're here today. <coughs> There's something about me. I, I, I don't, anybody here like to read a book the second time, the third time, the fourth time? You guys like to read, watch movies multiple times? There are those people out there that watch movies over and over. I don't. When I know the ending, I'm done. I'm done. I've never, ever, in my, if I did it, I was young, and I did it once and never did it again and forgot. I've gone to the back of the book and read the ending before I started. And there's no reason to read it. That's just me. But there's one book I love to read the ending. Yeah. Yeah. I love. So let's go. Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation. Verse 5. Have we had a little bit of Revelation read this morning? Chapter 5, and we're going into verse 9. Revelation 5, verse 9. Revelation. And we're jumping into John's vision. All right, we're jumping into John, the guy who wrote Revelation, his vision in heaven. And he's writing, and he says, and they sang a new song, saying, and it's because they saw the Lamb come and take the scroll from the hand of the one who sat on the throne. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book, the scroll, and to break its seals, for you were slain, and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe. By the way, it wasn't just men, human beings from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Amen. So we see that Jesus is worthy, and he paid the price. And my question is, I know in church you use this, but is that enough? And the right answer, because I was really good in school at getting the right answer, the right answer was, yeah, that was enough. But I'm just kind of one of those brass tacks, reality guys. And the question is, this was John's vision, and I read it here, and I, I can't necessarily see it. it, it, it maybe it's too far removed for I just don't see that. And we're asking, answering the question of why, why? Why do we do this? Why do we have a missions convention? Why do we make sure that people in the community have food? Why do we do the things we do? What's... Sometimes it's... I mean, what's in it for me other than feeling good or... You know, me and my family, because we're very focused on me, right? Me or my family or my group or my tribe, my church, my community, right? Or just me if I'm taking care of somebody out there and need to feel good. So I want us to think of something else. I have a question for you. And if Jesus, you have never given your heart and mind and life to Jesus, this question won't make a lot of sense. But listen to it because there's a life in it. Do you remember what the darkness was like before you gave your life to Jesus? Do you remember the darkness? Do you remember the hopelessness? Stop and think about what it was like before you committed your life to Jesus. 
what it was like before light came in, before you felt that joy, before you had the real smile on your face, the smile that comes from a heart that has been forgiven its sins. Now, some of you may say, Mark, that's been a long time ago, and I try not to remember that darkness. You know what? We don't talk about it, but it's okay to reflect on it because it reminds us that He is worthy. It reminds us what Jesus has done. And you might say, well, you know what, Mark? I grew up in church and I was five or eight or ten and I really don't remember darkness like I've heard these stories of it. You know what? It's okay because I have a question for you. If you've lived some life, you had a moment where it was pretty dark? Have you had a moment where it felt really hopeless? And you did the only thing you know to do. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, I need you. Help me. And he came and then he flooded and he flooded the situation. It may have still been a really tough situation. It may have gone really hard for you. But you knew that he had come and he had given you peace and he had given you hope again. And Jesus had done that. So remember that. I want us to think on that. Now I'm going to ask you. Is Jesus worth it? He's worth it because he's God. But he's worth it to put some real feelings in it. Because I was sinking deep in sin. Far from any kind of peaceful shore in my life. Really deeply stained within. And I don't know about anybody else, but I was sinking to rise no more. But the guy who spoke the very seas into me heard my cry, Jesus, Son of David, come, have mercy on me. And from that deep water, he lifted me. And anybody knows the song I'm going, now save the life. His love lifted me. His love, his love. You know, to Jesus, we were worth it. To Jesus, we were worth it. He brought us out. out. You can fill in the blank what it was. And so he's worth you praying about coming to Shipwreck Island. He's worth you praying and asking, do you want me to go to that hot, sticky island where they're going to put a curse on me? He's worth us for going whatever we wanted so can we can send others to go. He's worth us spending our time in prayer. You know, guys, uh, it felt like family, so I'm just going to talk like family. I struggle. Because when I was 38, Jesus changed my heart. But my sin cost me my marriage. And at 38, I started over again financially with a big, fat zero. It wasn't negative, thank you, Jesus, but it was zero. And so I worked maybe another eight years, and then I headed out, came up here to the Faith Homes and headed to the mission field, and, and, and the money going in the bank account was zero. So I had maybe eight years. Anybody who knows anything about saving and investment says, eight years at 38, Boy, you know, I, I, from an American standpoint, I'm in trouble for retirement. Come on. Come on. 
And sometimes I'm like, Jesus, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. Is he worth it? So what I did before I headed to the mission field was practice law. And it wasn't all the fancy stuff you see on TV. It was just taking care of estates, people and their money, right? And there's something that I saw that I learned. And I learned this even before Jesus changed my heart and opened my eyes and I really saw. You know what? A millisecond after you're dead, it doesn't matter how much you have. It doesn't. It doesn't. I've seen people come in with, we're not talking hundreds of thousands, we're talking millions. And you know what? It didn't matter. They're struggling to figure out what we're going to do because the kids are going to spend it in 29 seconds. Right? And then you begin to see it doesn't matter. And it's not about where I'm going, but it Jesus thought I was worth it. Jesus thought you was worth it. You were worth it. Jesus actually thought the guy on the island that raises his knife to plunge it in the heart, I mean, how, I don't know how they do a human sacrifice, that that guy's worth it. It gets even more, you know, it's, it's not just about the money part either. Is he worth us giving a priority? Is he worth us putting aside the distractions? Putting aside my distractions? I, I'm, I'm preaching out of myself here, okay? Putting aside the distractions to pray for the guy who's gonna do a human sacrifice on an island. Is he worth it? Because I don't know about you, but I gotta have a reminder of why I'm writing that check every month sometimes. Now, why am I doing this? Oh yeah, Jesus is worth it. Why am I doing this? Why am I obeying and he may actually be leading me to go to the island? Because he gave. Because I remember the darkness and he's worth a whole lot more than that. It's even more incredible than that because do you realize that Jesus claimed that inheritance but the way he's claiming the inheritance is to ask you and ask me to go share the gospel with somebody else and I don't know about you but I probably wouldn't pick me to claim my inheritance if I had it. You know what I mean? It's like, really? You're going to pick that guy? Huh? Come on. No offense, you're going to pick them? Right? But that's what Jesus is doing. He's saying, you, go, 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 go claim my inheritance so that when we stand on that day, People from every tongue, tribe, and nation, and you're like, I know I helped with that. I know I helped with, you guys has got some tongues, tribes, and nations, come here. Come and get food. And you share the gospel with them, you share love with them, you show them Jesus. He's worth it. There's, there's one more thing. I just, I want to I go take a peek at this. Just to remind ourselves, wow, what he's done. If you're still in Revelation, hang a left and go to Revelation chapter 3. And in verse 11, this is a message to the church. This is Philadelphia, but it's to us. I'm coming quickly. Hold
Hold on fast to what you have so that no one will take your crown. That crown he's talking about is a crown of life, (laughs) eternal life that he's given us. He or she, the person who overcomes, I will take, I will make them a pillar in the temple of my God. And they will not go out from it anymore. And I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my own new name. Jesus thinks we're worth it enough to take dust. Guys, we're dust, right? To take dust and say, I'm going to make in the temple of my God. I'm going to make you... We can't even figure out what that really means because that's in a whole other realm, right? It's in a whole other realm that Jesus is going to set us. Wow! I'm dust, I'm dirt, right? I'm not. I'm not a. He's worthy. He's worthy. I, I don't know if you see what I do. There are reasons why we do this. That go way beyond the flags. We've got to get flagged from my country. Way beyond the flags that are around here, right? Way beyond the numbers, way beyond the picture that are on the back wall. And that's awesome. And that's all part of it. It's all part of remembering. But I want us to remember today. And I think the number one thing I want us to remember, and I guess I'm also reminding myself, because i got a check there, right? Jesus has been talking to me. Yes, missionaries give. Other missionaries Sometimes we lose, we're just passing money around. <laughs> That's all right. Because it's obedience. Because it's obedience. That's how I ended up on an island halfway around the world that I'd never heard of. Because I just took the next step. I just took the next step. When I cashed that check that that lady gave me and went to the island, I closed the office. The house sold while I was, well, yeah, I, before that. It was, I was swinging out on a, a rope. I didn't know where I was going. And I cut off my source of income. And it's just like Jesus. I took the next step. You got me, right? Yeah, right. The one who spoke the spirit of the world in order. He's got us. These guys. You know what? You may still be at a point today. You say, Mark, that was all good. But I, honestly, I just don't see it. You know what? That's okay. On one condition that you just tell him that. Because what you do is you say, Jesus, I just don't see it. And when we get real honest with him, you know what it is? It's called humility. We humble ourselves to tell him where we really are. The creator of the universe is drawn to humility. And you just say, hey, Jesus, this is where I am. And I can't make it up. I'm not, I just, help me. Jesus, help me to see it. He will help you. If you just keep asking and keep believing and keep trusting that he will help you to see it. Oh, he will. We need workers. Well, you just ask Jesus. I know. It's like, what? Okay, Mark. You're all good until you start talking about this. 
Would you just ask Jesus, do you want me to go? Are you calling me? If you think he said yes, you know what I tell you to do? Just go talk to your pastor. I'd say, what? Yeah. Don't go sell your house. Talk to your pastor. You know why? When we submit that stuff to our spiritual authority, and then just say, hey, the next thing. Do you know my pastor at the time when I was doing all this? He told me at one time, I said, I think it's time to close the office. And he goes, oh, not yet, baby. That's how he talks. <laughs> and I said, I remember driving out of his parking lot and the Holy Spirit was just laying before me, you're going to submit or not? And I just submitted. Later, I kissed him on the cheek, thanking him for his wisdom. He saw things I didn't see. A year later, I'm like, okay, I think the Holy Spirit's telling me this again. I'm going to go ask him. And I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm good. He's going to tell me no. And I just checked it off the list. He said, yep, get her done. <laughs> so then I had to submit to that, right? Pray. Ask Jesus, do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? We need people praying. I have a prayer list on my table out there. You can grab a card. You can sign up on an email prayer list. And it's just, you know, we might be on the islands and say, hey, I heard they're going to have sacrifice tomorrow. And you all can pray. So it's not going to be a fancy big newsletter and everything. It's just going to be that. Here's your email prayer request. We need monthly support. Same way. Will you ask Jesus, what do you want me to commit to this year, this missions convention? I'll be honest. I was thinking about this. Actually, I was... I was going back over the sermon sitting right over there in the tower of the Zion Faith Homes. And I'm like, oh yeah, because we like to take it. We're not a widow with the two mites, right? We're just taking that out of our excess. And the Holy Spirit is like, that's nice to tell them, but what are you doing? Okay. Right? So how is it that I know to say you're just taken out of your excess? Because that's what I've been done. Instead of asking him, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to give? Oh. I'd like the honor and the privilege of praying for you guys. Is that all right? I just pray for you. Father, Daddy, Abba, thank you for this beautiful congregation, this beloved group of brothers and sisters that, God, you have brought together. Thank you. Thank you. I ask you, Father, bless them. Father, I ask you to bless most of all their relationship with you. And their relationship with each other. Their relationship with their lost loved ones. Their relationships with those that they are at work with. Their relationships with the people that they meet on the streets. Father, open our eyes to see the mission field around us. We've been talking about the one halfway around the world. And Father, you planted us in a mission field here. Open our eyes, Jesus. Bless them with wide open eyes. Bless them this year with souls, new souls brought into the kingdom because you are worthy. Father, bless them with new souls, new families, new grandmas and grandpas. Father, bless 
their finances. You are so good. You have provided so much for every single one of us. Thank you, Father. God, I ask you to bless this very group this year in their finances. Bless them with healings. Bless them with works. Father, bless them with gifts of the Spirit, your Spirit. Pour yourself out upon them this year, I pray. Bless Pastor Ken, Don, and those who you've called to, to lead along and to shepherd, to gather as brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, would you knit them together in unity with one purpose, one goal, one mind to live Jesus. That they may, that all may see Jesus high and lifted up. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We're going to uh, we're going to receive this is the first of uh, four opportunities to give to missions. We're going to receive an, a, a, a love offering this morning and every every mission service that we have, and then we'll divide that among our four guests evenly. You know, so that way everybody gets a you know a fair amount. So if you did, if you really weren't prepared to give today, you can do tonight. You can do Wednesday. You can do next Sunday. But as, as, as you're thinking about what you would like to give, um, I want to ask you, I want to I give you a little quiz, see if you're paying attention this morning. How's that? Let's put it that way. God, God just, Mark said something that really gripped my heart, and I, and I want to make sure you got it. First off, what did he do before he became a minister? He was a lawyer. Good job, Millie. Woo! Everybody give the matriarch a round of applause. And when Mark began, he, he started in, in, in Psalm chapter 2 and verse 7. And it was a word of the Father to Jesus the Son, right? And it was, ask of me and I will give what? the nations as inheritance. So Jesus' inheritance is what? Nations. It's people. Christ, Jesus' inheritance is us. The nations. All these flags, right? Now here's what Mark said, though, that I think we need to review and we need to get a hold of. How does Jesus claim his inheritance? What did the lawyer say about how we claim, our, how Jesus claims his inheritance? How does he get it? Through us. Do you know what that makes us? The executor of the will. That makes us the executor of the will. That means if Jesus is going to get the inheritance that he's due, that means that if Jesus is going to get the inheritance that he's worthy of, that he earned upon the cross, that he deserves, it comes through us. Now, what is the inheritance? People, friends, this is why we do what we do. Because Jesus' inheritance is people. That's what he wants. That's what he died for. That's what he came to gain 
was people. And He does it through us. He, we ex, we, we're the executors of the will. We execute the plan of God in the world so that Jesus gets His due. What's Jesus worth? I never looked at it like that before. I never looked at it like that before. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That's why when God speaks to your heart, that's why when God says, go to this island that's called the shipwrecked island. That's why when God says, go to that forgotten island, we go. That's why when God speaks to your heart, it says, go talk to your neighbor. Go talk to that kid at school. That's why we go. Because we are executing His will. Are you with me? That also applies to our missions pledge, our missions giving, our praying. Why, why do we... Is anybody else like me lately? I can't sleep anymore. Oh my goodness. It's making me, I gotta admit, I'm getting a little frustrated and a little grumpy about it because I, I can't seem to make it past like 3.37 on my clock anymore. And I don't know why. You know? It's driving me nuts. But that's why in the middle of the night, when, we, when God stirs us, that's why we begin to lift people up in prayer because we're executing His will. Do you understand, guys? Ushers, if you could come, if you could come right now, guys, we're going we're to receive this offering. But I trust that God has been speaking to your heart this morning. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Father, we come to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we thank you that through, through your Holy Spirit, God, you have been speaking to our hearts. And God, you've been guiding us and you've been helping us and you've been teaching us. And God, you've been preparing our hearts and you've been equipping our hearts, Lord, for, for your work, God, for yourself. And Jesus, I come to you this morning and I just ask, God, that, Lord, that you would bless us today. God, that you bless those who give. God, that you would bless. And God, would, you know, we, Lord, we say this a lot of times when we receive an offering. Use this to the furthering of your kingdom. It's kind of like, God, sometimes we're just saying, that's kind of like the amen when we receive an offering. But Lord, this morning, I, I mean it. God, would you use this offering to the furthering of your kingdom that Jesus' inheritance would be claimed in the earth through it, Lord. That people would be brought into your kingdom and lives changed and souls saved. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I always forget to, to tell you guys this, but you know, there is another way you can go.